This physics revision video is the fifth in a series about energy transfers, looking at gravitational potential energy, or GPE for short. We'll look at some key concepts and practice three different types of calculation. By the end of this video, you should be able to define gravitational potential energy, recall the equation to calculate gravitational potential energy, calculate it, and then use the rearranged equation to calculate mass and gravitational field strength. If you think about any object that isn't just lying on the ground, some work has been done in order to raise it to a certain height and overcome its weight. In other words, we've had to transfer some energy to it. We call this store of energy gravitational potential energy. There are three things that will influence the size of a gravitational potential energy store. How heavy the object is, or its mass, the height it's been lifted to, and the strength of the gravitational field. If we put these three components together, we can make up the ninth equation that you need to memorise for the exams, or the eleventh if you're taking triple science. So here's our equation. E in physics stands for energy, and we use the little subscript P to show that this is potential energy. If you want to just write E, then that's fine. So the gravitational potential energy that an object gains as it's lifted is its mass multiplied by gravitational field strength, in other words, how strong is the pull of gravity wherever it is, multiplied by the height that the object has been lifted to. As with all of your GCSE physics equations, it's important that you use the standard international units for each quantity, otherwise the answer to any calculation you do won't come out of the right size. GPE is a type of energy, so as with all energy, it's measured in joules, with a nice capital J. Mass is in kilograms, and it's very likely that you'll need to convert this from the value given in the question. It's quite usual for the exam board to give it to you in grams and check to see whether you've remembered to convert, so watch out for that. Gravitational field strength is in newtons per kilogram, and you should know that on Earth this has a value of 9.8. Height is measured in metres, and again, you may need to convert this from something that's given to you in kilometres or centimetres or millimetres. So let's look now at a worked example of how we would apply this calculation. If we're trying to calculate the gravitational potential energy that's gained by a 50 kilogram girl on Earth, where GFS is 9.8 newtons per kilogram, when she jumps 1.8 metres into the air above a trampoline, we're going to do mass multiplied by gravitational field strength multiplied by height. So 50 multiplied by 9.8 multiplied by 1.8, which gives us an answer of 882 joules. Pause the video and have a go at answering the next four questions yourself. So for each question, we're multiplying the mass by the gravitational field strength by the height. But of course, we're watching out each time to make sure that the mass is in kilograms and the height is in metres. And if they're not, then we'll need to convert them. So for question one, this is quite straightforward. We're multiplying 44 by 9.8 by 2. And that gives us an answer of 862.4 joules. Then for question two, we need to recognise that the altitude or the height has been given in kilometres. So three kilometres will be 3,000 metres. And therefore we're doing 5,000 times 9.8 times 3,000, not just by three. And that gives us an answer of 147 million joules. Then for question three, we've got a mass in kilograms and the gravitational field strength, but the height has been given in centimetres. So we need to divide that by 100 to get it into metres. So then we get 70 times 1.6 times 0 0.7, which gives us an answer of 79.38 joules. And then finally, for the last question, we're doing 4 times 24.79 times 1.1, which gives us an answer of 109.076 joules. As with all of your GCSE physics equations, you need to be able to rearrange this equation to make any of the terms the subject. So let's look at how we would do that if we wanted to calculate mass. Right now, mass isn't on its own, it isn't the subject, it's being multiplied by gravitational field strength and by height. So in order to get rid of that g and h on the right hand side of the equation, we need to do the inverse operation. Right now they're multiplying, so we need to divide by them to get rid of them, because anything divided by itself is just one, so it just disappears from the equation. And then whatever we do to the right hand side, we need to do to the left hand side. So if we're dividing the right hand side by g and h, we need to divide the left hand side by g and h, and that's exactly what we do. So this rearranged equation tells us that the gravitational potential energy divided by gravitational field strength and height is equal to mass. 
So now if we want to calculate the mass of an object which, when it's raised up to 5 metres on Earth, where gravitational field strength is 9.8, it gains 88.2 joules of gravitational potential energy, then we can use this equation. Mass is that total number of joules of energy divided by 9.8 multiplied by 5. So if you're doing this on your calculator, you've got two options. You can use brackets around the GH, or you could work out what G times H is and then divide by that number. So I'm going to do 88.2 divided by 49, which is what 9.8 times 5 is, and that gives me an answer of 1.8. And because it's a mass, I need to give it in kilograms. Pause the video and have a go at these four questions now. Remember, you need to watch out for the units in the question and also to either use brackets around gravitational field strength and height if you're putting them into your calculator as a fraction, or just work out what gravitational field strength multiplied by height is before you do the calculation. So for question one, we have 194.4 joules because we know that's the energy because it's got joules after it, divided by 1.62 times 10. And that gives us an answer of 12 kilograms. Then for question two, we need to be aware that the height has been given in kilometres, so you'll need to convert that to metres, and it's going to be 500 metres. That gives us a final answer of 54 kilograms. For question three, we can just use all of the numbers as they've been given to us, which gives an answer of 32 kilograms. And then for question four, again, the height hasn't been given in metres, so 45 centimetres is 0.45 metres, and that gives an answer of 320 kilograms. We can use the same strategy to make either of the two remaining quantities the subject of the equation. So let's look quickly at how we could use the same formula to work out gravitational field strength. Right now, g isn't on its own, it's multiplied by mass and by height. So to get rid of something that's multiplying, we divide, and whatever we do to the right side, we do to the left. So we're left with potential energy divided by mass and height is going to be gravitational field strength. So to calculate the strength of the gravitational field, when a four kilogram object raised three meters gains 24 joules of gravitational potential energy, we're going to do 24, because that's our energy, because it's got a joules after it, divided by four times three. In other words, 24 divided by 12, which is two newtons per kilogram. So to finish off, here are four more questions for you to have a go at. Remember, you need to check out the units for mass and for height, and you either need to be using brackets or working out what mass times height is before you do the calculation. So pause the video and write down some answers now. The gravitational field strength when a 12 kilogram object raised 6 metres gains 14.4 joules of gravitational potential energy will be 14.4 divided by 12 times 6, which is 72, which gives an answer of 0.2 newtons per kilogram. Then for question two, we need to watch out for the fact that this is only 50 centimetres, and so that's 0.5 metres, and so that's going to give us an answer of 11 newtons per kilogram. Then we've got a 650 gram object, so that needs to be converted into kilograms, 0.65. So 104 divided by 0.65 times 4 is 40 newtons per kilogram, and then finally we need to convert that mass from milligrams into kilograms, so divide it by a thousand twice, or just divide it by a million, and that gives us an answer of six newtons per kilogram. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you found that a useful introduction to gravitational potential energy. If you did find it useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more GCSE physics videos coming soon, and you can always let me know in the comments if there are other topics you'd like me to cover.